This is a, uh, this man is uh, Larry Grathwall. He is the only FBI agent to ever successfully infiltrate the weathermen. Once, when he was a lot younger than this, he got inside the group and he trained as he gained their trust, the trust of Bill Ayers. He probed their plans for the future. I want you to listen to this because this is what they said they had to do in the 60s. He made some amazing discoveries. Watch this old footage. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. Okay. Now that's changed because now they've grown up, they're adults, and they also have some politicians and some global thinkers that will help them structure things. But did they have any other contingency plans? Oh yes. Oh yes, they sure did. Their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. Let that sink in. This is an FBI agent who um, infiltrated the Weather Underground and Bill Ayers, Bernadine Dorn. They're, they're still saying the same thing. But let me give you again the words of Van Jones. Drop the radical pose for the radical ends. If you've got somebody and you're the man, if you've got somebody now who's going to say you don't have a right to privacy in your email, you don't have a right to privacy of location, um, if, if you're funding a terrorist organization, not to find. Remember, they don't believe in terrorists. We're not fighting a war on terror. So why are they now pushing for, if you, if you are funding a terrorist organization, you can be held without due process. You don't believe in any of these terrorist organizations, and you were against Guantanamo. Why would you do that? Let it sink in a bit. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious. Back in a minute. Saturday, Judge Napolitano is on the case, policing big government, exposing bureaucrats, safeguarding your rights. The Constitution was written to limit the government. When politicians cross that line, I'll be there. The judge is taking the toughest issues head on. Exclusive interviews, hard-hitting investigations, the one show delivering a message straight to D.C.'s power players. From Capitol happenings to Supreme Court surprises, we're in the middle of it all. Freedom Watch with Judge Napolitano on Fox Business. Pure liberty, no excuses. Please share this episode with your friends. Please DVR this show so you don't miss any of it. Um, if you just joined us, we were talking about a group in the United States. We had a group here whose goal it was to eliminate 10% of the U.S. population. Why? Because that's what anarchist, Marxist, communist, revolutionaries, Maoists do. They have to do it to be able to gain control. 
But when they first came up with these ideas, it was just a small group incapable of pulling off the overthrow of the United States government, right? They couldn't do it. In the 1960s, they couldn't do it because the family was together, because our government, even run by this guy, wasn't as corrupt as it is now. And they were radicals. They've, they've changed the radical pose. And they've put themselves in power and they've made you the radical. Now they can. Now they can. A secret FBI report in 1976 noted that the Weather Underground was receiving aid from Cuba, technical assistance from North Korea. In other words, this was a situation that had the potential to become far, far worse with people like Bill Ayers, who was okay with killing 10% of the people. The point is to expose these people. We're not this stupid. American, Americans are not this stupid. We just don't want to believe. You have to look at the truth before this thing becomes something out of our control. I'm not saying, and I want to make this clear, good heavens. You know, I have to tell you something. It shows like this tonight that make me go home and when I go to bed and I say my prayers, I say, Lord, what else do you want me to do? What else could I possibly say? What other video? What else could I do to get people to wake up? I, I, I... Please, please help people wake up. I'm not saying that you and I are going to, you know, meet each other next week in a concentration camp in southern Utah. I am saying that there are elements with connections with government officials that have positions in the government now. This guy is writing books on, this is a comic book by Bill Ayers, okay? How to teach our children. You want these people? These are the people who have actually been willing to and tried to accomplish it in the past. Let me show you again. What they said about, this is an FBI agent who infiltrated the Weather Underground. This is him in 1981. Please listen to this. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. These are the same people that are everywhere in our government and our education system. Please, please learn from history. this program tonight we've been exposing revolutionaries and they are there. Uh, Van Jones this week said that this is a turning point for the progressive movement. It is, I fear. If you go on to America's Future Now, the website, you will see this article. Progressives, time to go off the reservation. It says, quote, history suggests that progressive movements must organize independently of democratic in, uh, administrations to affect change. We must be off the reservation as labor was under Roosevelt. Do your history. Labor wasn't disconnected under Re Roosevelt. It only appeared to be. The civil rights movement was under Johnson. President Johnson wanted the Reverend Martin Luther King to shut down the demonstration, saying that they would make reform impossible. But with an independent movement, even King could not do that. Instead, he went to Selma, and the resulting confrontation led directly to the passage of the Voting Rights Act. America, these guys joined with these guys. The politicians joined with the revolutionaries so they could gain power. Now it is time to break apart because the summer of rage is about to begin. They're gonna dress as Martin Luther King, they will hold hands and sing songs, they will accept the pose, but know exactly who they are. They're revolutionaries. 
They can say and dress and act every way they want. You know who you are. You must become Martin Luther King and the people that marched for equal rights. I'm told that tens of thousands of prayer meetings are being held on this day. For that, I'm deeply grateful. We are a nation under God, and I believe God intended for us to be free. It would be fitting and good, I think, if on each inaugural day in future years, it should be declared a day of prayer. from New York.